What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. If you were to live in one video game world, many people might say that the universe of Pokémon would be a good choice. And I could see why living in a pleasant small town full of endearing creatures would be a fine life. However, I think we're forgetting the fact that even adorable Pokémon can hide dark secrets that would easily destroy us all, with our only hope at glimpsing these enigmas being the Pokédex. You might be in the camp of the Pokédex being random nonsense that people made up just to meet a deadline, but if even half of these stories are true, it's astounding that the world hasn't already ended. Some of them are only a little quirky and benign, like apparently Motham likes to steal honey from hives of Combi, so that's a rivalry that we never really knew about. And then there are others like Oinkalone with the male saying that it uses its scent to drive female Pokémon wild. And it doesn't just say females of its own species though, so that's weird. However, the girl version of this pig says that it can jump 16 feet no problem. Now that's not world destroying, but it would certainly still be terrifying to see a pig standing on the ground to suddenly jump three times higher than your head. But it doesn't take long to delve even deeper, like with Tinkatuff, where the deck's entries plainly state that they use their hammers to attack groups of Ponyard, and then use fragments of their broken bodies to build more weapons and housing. It's one thing to fight a creature because you're going to die without eating, but it's another far more malicious turn of events when you collect their remains for luxury items just to make your life a little easier. That is a shocking level of callousness that you wouldn't really expect from a metallic Sour Patch Kid. The Pokedex can sometimes try to garner sympathy, like when claiming Sharpedo used to be the victim of overfishing, but you really need to make sure you read them all, because in Gen 3 they not only tell us that any of its teeth will instantly regrow, but just one of these Pokémon can thoroughly tear apart a super tanker. So just a single Sharpedo can rip through a massive ship? That makes its Mega Form even scarier when it's said the energy from Mega Evolution runs through them, causing it sharp pain and suffering. So not only is Sharpedo in anguish just for living, but it's now angrier than ever. And when it could already obliterate a giant vessel with ease, I would hate to see what it would do on an anger and pain fueled rampage. Another sneakily strong Pokémon would be Lurantis, where the Dex mostly talks about it faking as a bug type, but in Moon version it says it fires beams from its sickle shaped petals. Which is odd because it seems more of a physically focused Pokémon, but it continues. These beams are powerful enough to cleave through thick metal plates. So apparently, not only does this not mantis effortlessly fire powerful blasts out of its claws, but they can tear down metal structures while doing it. Which is especially terrifying given its native environment is far less sturdy, being surrounded by trees. At the very least, Lurantis could casually cut down all the trees around it with lasers, but I'm shocked that it doesn't routinely cause forest fires everywhere it goes. If plates of metal can't stand up to it, then just imagine the damage that Totem Lurantis could do to the fragile lush jungle ecosystem. Next, a Pokémon that seems to get a lot of hate is Delphox, since it's never as appreciated as the other Kalos starters. But maybe there's a good reason for that, because the Pokédex says, It generates a fiery vortex of 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit, incinerating foes swept into the whirl of flames. So first off, that's not quite as hot as a Magcargo, but since the sun is 10,000 degrees, being more than half of that would certainly put Delphox's fire into a massive hazard level. So not only could it incinerate foes as it says, but it seems all too happy to do so. Delphox will melt an opposing Pokémon to the ground, laughing while he does it, without a second thought to the crippling ecological impact that an inferno of that magnitude would have to the nearby nature or buildings, let alone humans. You would think that having psychic powers might provide Delphox with a bit of empathy, but they have no qualms causing a catastrophe, and turning you into a pile of ash with a smile on their face. Now if we read up on legendary Pokémon, it's no surprise to see immense power, like Tornadus being able to blow away houses with ease. But that's obvious. It's far scarier when an unassuming Pokémon belies an extraordinary power, such as Pangoro. In Pokémon Shield, the Dex describes this Kung Fu Panda by saying, It strikes with punches that can turn a dump truck into scrap with just one hit. Speaking from experience, it doesn't take all that much for a car to be declared totaled for insurance purposes, but turning it into scrap is far different. 
I don't know how many tons of pressure that would take, but Pangoro can do it with a flick of the wrist. And if that weren't bad enough, Shield also says, using its leaf, Pangoro can predict the moves of opponents. So not only is there no escaping its rib-shattering punches, but Sword version also says it lives for duels against Obstagoon. So that means that Pangoro will be picking fights all the time. And while these rocking badgers might have the perfect move to shield themselves, I doubt that protection would extend to the buildings behind them, or any mountainsides that might get demolished in the crossfire, leaving everyone buried beneath a Pangoro-powered avalanche. Another seemingly innocent Pokémon that you should be on the lookout for is Frostmoth. The Pokédex says, It shows no mercy to any who desecrate fields or mountains. It will fly around on its icy wings, causing a blizzard to chase offenders away. You might say, well, I don't desecrate nature, so I'll be fine. Yeah, well, you're not the one deciding what counts as desecration. So if this frigid moth deems your nice picnic or even camping to be an affront to its chosen territory, then consider yourself a popsicle courtesy of its minus 290 degree wings. Okay, I guess we've put it off for long enough, but everybody knows that the ghost type has some of the most unnerving dex entries possible. So let's look at a few. Most people know how Bayonet is described as a toy that came to life due to the vehement grudge that it held for the child that discarded it. Now, it's creepy enough that the deck says that it will forever be looking for that child to exact its revenge, but perhaps even worse comes from an Ultra Moon Dex entry. There it says, Some say that treating it well will satisfy it, and it will once more become a stuffed toy. That very well might be a tall tale, but to me, that actually says that no one has ever tried. Nobody has bothered treating a bayonet well, or even being nice to it, since we still have them. There are tons of bayonet all over the world, and all you have to do is show them a little kindness to make them go away, but I guess they've never felt that sort of affection. I suppose that level of neglect explains the Megadex entry that talks about it cursing its own trainer. Another newer ghost that gives me pause is Bramblin. Now, I do like this base form, even if it is stated to in fact be a departed soul stuck in a tumbleweed. That seems like a pretty terrible fate to me, but I'm not so crazy about its evolution, Bramblegast. Both the design and the name don't really improve it enough for me, but the Pokedex calls it out by saying it will open the branches of its head to envelop its prey. Once it absorbs all the life energy it needs, it expels the prey and discards it. So these literal weeds will grab a hold of you, drain away your life, and then carelessly toss your ragdoll of a body aside just to do it again. It is true that they can't exactly always control where they go, but the entry for Violet also says, mass outbreaks of these Pokémon will bury an entire town. So if you do the math on that and realize that it would take hundreds if not thousands of these paranormal parasites to cover a whole town, it means there is no way that you would come out unscathed, and you would have multiple ghosts latching onto you to drain away your life essence all but ensuring that you become the next spirit trapped in a bramble to join them on their next hunt. Okay, this is the last ghost, I promise, but let's look at Mistrevis. This lone specter of Gen 2 is known to play mischievous pranks on people, but according to the decks, that's because it gets nourishment from fear that it absorbs into its red orbs. So yes, apparently the lovely jewelry around its neck is made up of the terror of innocent bystanders that it frightens in the dead of night. But don't worry, because it uses that to eat. You might say that makes it a little less spiteful if it needs fear to eat. However, even more drastic ones like Lampant consuming souls is at least a singular event. It's a one and done after all, but if Mistrevis requires dread in order to survive, that means that it's going to continually antagonize and frighten people forever. It's already a ghost, so it's not like you can just wait for it to die. No, this prankster phantom will always be here to lurk in the shadows, to pull on your hair, or disturb you with creepy sobbing wails. Also, it can scoop up your fear into its necklace for a snack, again and again. Now, everybody knows the original generation of Pokémon, but one of the most overlooked to me is probably Seedra. Even as a final evolution, it was a little underwhelming, but it soon became a middle stage on the way to Kingdra. However, perhaps we should have paid more attention to this spiky seahorse because it surprisingly has a lot going on. First of all, Seedra is apparently poisonous. I guess we didn't need to bother making the scrope line at all because Seedra already had this covered. Seedra isn't jagged just for fun, it's got poisonous barbs all over it. 
with the deck saying, its body bristles with sharp spikes. Carelessly trying to touch it could cause fainting from the spikes. I'm not saying that we needed more poison types in Gen 1, but if Cedric can accidentally knock someone out with a small scrape, just how lethal is this toxin? However, even outside of that, Cedra has regular ominous dex entries, stating, Cedra generates whirlpools by spinning its body. This Pokemon weakens prey with these currents, then swallows it whole. Whole? What, through that tiny little snout? Does it unhinge like a snake? But that's not even the worst of it, because I left out the middle of that same dex entry, which says, The whirlpools are strong enough to swallow even fishing boats. Yes, this poisonous seahorse that can devour prey in one bite is not only powerful enough, but willing to take down human vessels. So how many poor sailors have seen their demise in the thrall of a Cedra? It would be wise not to underestimate this thing in the future and to stay on guard while surfing. And lastly, I want to glance over at Yen Mega. There are clear discrepancies with this one because the deck says that it can lift an entire adult human, but it could never learn to fly a gym, so assuming that is true, it seems Yen Mega is just lazy and doesn't want to help. But far worse than that is the Pokedex entry that says, It prefers to battle by biting apart foes' heads instantly while flying at high speed. That is appallingly violent and comes out of nowhere with how innocent Yanma seemed to be, just politely minding its own business as a neat little friend. Now, we are not given a top speed for this Dragonfly Pokémon, but it is said to make shockwaves with how fast it moves its wings, so I'm guessing that Yen Mega can swoop in to decapitate you before you even see it coming. But don't worry, the deck says that's only what it prefers to do. Forget adding the Dragon-type, this thing should be dark because it's a way worse fast bug than Ninjask, since the Ogre Darner has razor-sharp teeth that it's not afraid to use. Watch your necks on this one, people. There are, of course, hundreds of other interesting facts from the Pokédex that could be pointed out, like a powerful anesthetic being made out of Komala's drool, or perhaps Galarian Rapidash to use its powerful horn to gore you if it senses evil in your heart, or just the sad fact that Mega Evolution reminds Kangaskhan that its child will in fact one day leave it. The Pokédex is littered with depressing, dangerous, and downright terrifying entries reminding us how out of our depth we really are. Which Pokédex entries disturb you the most? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And until next time, stay grounded.